Hi everyone. So today we will be talking about Puton audiometry, which is an important topic from the exam point of view and also from the day-to-day -day practice of a ENT surgeon basically. So what is uh, audiometer? Audiometer is an electronic device which is capable of producing Puton's. So this is an audiometer. Okay. The, why are we trying to produce these Puton's? Because we can standardize it, standardize uh, the sound that is presented to the patient's ears. Okay, so so why is the standardization? Suppose uh, a person in India says that a patient named X has a hearing loss of say 30 decibels. So this should be comparable to any person. Suppose there is a doctor in US. Now, if an audiologist is saying that this person is having a 30 decibels of hearing loss, it should be 30, the same thing should be, you, you mean the same thing. Like suppose if you say, uh, this is a color which is red. So, if that, that should be the same thing in uh, US also, that is also the color red. If I say this is red, but I say this is like uh, lal color hai Hindi mein, and this guy will never understand what is lal color. Okay, so we are trying to standardize it. To standardize it, we need to produce pure tones, so that we can we can be like okay, I am producing these pure tones. This is the quality of the sound. These are the characteristics of the sounds. So, this, what is a pure tone? A pure tone is any sound with a sinusoidal waveform. Again, this is standardization. So, if I say I produce a pure tone, that pure tone is having a particular uh, amplitude, it is having a particular wavelength and it is having a particular frequency. So, basically you are standardizing the standard, standardizing the sound that you are presenting to the patient's ears. So, that your results will be comparable to the results of uh, anyone uh, who does an audio, audiometer, audiometry anywhere in the world. Okay, so what is a pure audiometer? An audiometer is nothing but an electronic device which is capable of producing pure tones. Pure tones means they have a certain characteristics which are reproducible anywhere in the world. Okay, which are reproducible anywhere in the world. And the speciality and the capability of an audiometer is that that pure tones intensity can be increased or decreased by 5 decibel steps. So, you are testing for a patient's, uh, patient's hearing threshold, at what, we will come to that, but basically we are coming, we are trying to test the threshold of hearing of the patient. So, this is a particular frequency I am giving to the patient and at a certain intensity, at say 0 is uh, the basic level and then I increase it to 5. Can you hear at 5? He says no. Can you hear at 10? He says no. Can you hear at 15? He says no. Can you hear at 20? He says yes. So this is the threshold, the 20 decibels is the threshold at which the patient is able to hear. Okay, this is the basic objective of an audiometer or an audiogram or an audiograph. Okay, so but always remember that this is not 100% accurate because uh, you are presenting a sound to the patient. You are presenting a sound to the patient and that is obviously a pure tone and you are presenting it at a at a particular decibel to the patient. But the patient has to respond to your sound. In this response, one person will differ from the other person. So this is subjective. There is a chance for an error. But because you have standardized it this much, the chance of an error is less. But still it is a subjective test only. Okay, so what is the purpose of audiometry that I said? You want to find out the air conduction threshold. At what uh, decibels, at what uh, loudness of the sound he is able to hear when you present the sound through the air conduction route and also the bone conduction threshold also we are going to talk about in the next slide. So we want to find out about the air conduction threshold and the bone conduction threshold. Air conduction threshold means at what decibel intensity I am able to hear. That means the patient or the person who is being conducted, who is getting the test conducted on him is, uh, is uh, answering that. Okay. So you want to find out the air conduction threshold. Threshold at what in at what decibel loudness you are able to hear. Bone conduction threshold. You put a vi bone vibrator on the mastoid and then you give the particular decibel of loudness. Can you hear? She says yes, and that is the threshold. The lowest possible intensity which the patient can perceive is the threshold of hearing of that particular person. 
and then uh, yeah so air conduction threshold this is how we mark it on a audiograph okay so this is the right ear let us focus on the right ear right ear if you want to conduct if you want to test air conduction we mark it by o again this is also standardization anywhere in the world right ear air conduction is o okay so uh, here at, at 250 hertz we are testing for 250 hertz and when we start giving the sound to the patient at 0 decibels he says i cannot hear 5 decibels he says i cannot hear uh, 15 decibels he cannot hear but 10 decibels he can hear so this is the uh, sorry this is a 15 decibels so 10 this is 15 decibels at 15 decibels he can hear so 250 hertz at 15 decibels is the hearing threshold at that frequency another example suppose this is 8000 hertz i am testing for at the for 8000 hertz and he can hear it at approximately 70 decibels so this is the threshold of hearing at the seven at uh, for 8000 hertz is 70 decibels so then comes what is the uh, hearing impairment a normal person ideally should be able to hear the 8000 hertz frequency at 0 decibels so now he is able to hear at 70 decibels so this is the hearing impairment this is the hearing impairment this is what this is for air conduction air conduction is denoted in the right ear uh, by O and the left ear by X. So same thing you can have an example like this. At, for this is a left ear, blue color is left ear. At 1000 Hertz he is able to hear at 20 decibels. So this is the hearing threshold and this is 20 decibels is the hearing threshold and 0 to 20 that is the 20 decibels is the hearing impairment. Okay, this is how we uh, talk about in a audiograph. So bone conduction threshold, same thing uh, bone conduction threshold, air conduction threshold, one more thing. We test the air conduction thresholds at a very low frequencies like 120, 125, 250, 500, all of them are like double, 120, uh, double is 250, 500, 1000, 2000, 4000 and 8000 hertz. So these are all the frequencies that a patient is tested for in the right ear and the left ear, okay, the right ear and left ear, all these frequencies at the at, at 0 decibels you start and then you ask him at what decibels can he hear, at what decibels can he hear, like this, all the frequencies are tested and then you come across this graph, okay, in this patient as the frequency is increasing, his capability to hear is decreasing so this is the it is this patient is having high frequency hearing loss this is in relation to air conduction okay bone conduction also the same thing but instead of putting a headphone you put a mastoid vibrator on the patient's mastoid you put a mastoid vibrator on the patient's mastoid and you test for lower you don't test for 125 you don't test for 8000 okay the last two you don't test rest of them you test 250 500 1000 2000 and 4000 hertz so this is an example for a bone conduction bone conduction for the right ear is for a uh, again there is masking and unmasking but yeah we will talk about it later for so so uh, for this what is what does this mean at 250 hertz when i am testing for bone conduction in this patient i can hear it at 15 decibels so this is the threshold of bone conduction hearing at 250 hertz so same thing at 2000 hertz it has fallen down it has fallen down to 35 decibels so 35 decibels is the threshold and 35 decibels is the hearing impairment because zero is considered normal okay so uh, that's what i said uh, degree of hearing impairment at the amount of intensity raised above the normal range is the degree of hearing impairment how much hearing impairment he is he uh, encountering at so and so frequencies so you test for all these frequencies and in so and so frequencies you get the hearing uh, uh, at what threshold you can hear the same way you will come to know what is the hearing impairment so audiogram is a chart of the in the form of a graph this is an audiogram okay you, you mark it all these hearing thresholds air conduction thresholds air bone conduction thresholds air conduction threshold like this you make it you connect all the points what we get is called an audiogram okay audiometry okay then the threshold of bone conduction is a measure of cochlear function so that is the basic thing that we want to do we want to test his cochlear function by testing his bone conduction bone conduction so uh, this is air conduction is denoted by o bone conduction is denoted by less than sign okay so this is the bone conduction of this patient this is a normal audiograph so all the hearing thresholds are above almost all the hearing thresholds except the 8000 almost all of them are above the 20 decibel range 
okay so about 20 decibel range between 10 to 20 decibels is considered normal okay so bone conduction we are testing for this patient uh, at 250 he is able to hear it at 10 decibels at uh, uh, at 500 at around 20, 12 decibels then 15 decibels then 15 decibels then 15 decibels so all of them are coming above 20 decibels range so this is a normal audiogram uh, of this patient. Uh, when it is about 20 decibels, everything is between 10 to 20, we think that it is normal. So what are we testing with bone conduction? We are testing the cochlear function. Okay. So now coming to the other one, the difference in the thresholds of air and bone conduction. Now in the other graph we had, the previous graph we had, so this is a threshold of bone conduction, this is a threshold of air conduction. Normal people, in normal persons, there is no air bone gap, there is no air bone gap, okay, there is no air bone gap. But in a patient with conductive deafness, there is an air bone gap. That means at the same frequency, for bone conduction he is hearing at 15 decibels, but air conduction has come down to 65 decibels, so this is the air bone gap same frequency he is able to hear at 15 decibels which means his cochlear function is normal but his air conduction pathway has got seriously affected here so he is getting this air bone gap okay so there is a threshold for the bone con for the air conduction has come down compared to the uh, bone conduction so there is an air bone gap the air bone gap is seen only in conductive deafness okay in in rini is in tuning folk test what do we say air conduction is better than a bone conduction but here in a in a in a audiogram the bone conduction line is almost always at the level of the air conduction in normal people or even better there may be a mild uh, mild gap in which the bone conduction will be better which means he can perceive that sound that intensity of the sound to stimulate the cochlea is at a lesser uh, uh, lesser intensity than compared to the air conduction so there will be no airborne gap if an airborne gap is less than 15 decibels we do not consider it as a problem if it is greater than 15 decibels we consider it a problem and the patient is having conductive deafness okay so a normal person uh, normal person there is no airborne gap uh, that is what normal person the audiometer is so calibrated again this is called calibration only this is not in reality but we want to get a knowledge of what is happening to the patient so we are calibrating it in such a way that the hearing for a normal person both for air and bone conduction is at zero decibels and there is no air bone gap so this is what it is so all, both uh, the air conduction and the bone conduction will almost overlap with each other no air bone gap and also almost all the frequencies tested will be in between 0 to 20 decibels uh, gap in this range they will be there so that is how it is calibrated okay now coming to decibels decibels the intensity of the sound is expressed as decibels that we will be we know that decibel is the uh, intensity of the sound so if it is a normal breath sound it is 10 decibels if it is a whisper it is 30 decibels if it is a conversation it is between 50 to 70 decibels if it is a police siren it is at 120 decibels if it is a loud explosion it is at 140 decibels as the intensity of the sound is increasing the decibel is also increasing so you have to understand what is this decibel concept okay so decibel we have a we have a we have a formula which says that decibel is 20 log spl o by spl r where o is the uh, sound pressure level of the observed sound and spl r is the sound pressure level of the reference sound so we uh, understand the point that this is basically arbitrary okay this is not what is in reality but this is basically arbitrary for the purpose of testing for the purpose of uh, communication of the results of the patient across the doctors or in between various people you want to talk you have to talk in the same language so to have it in a standardized format this has been done so SPLO is sound pressure level of observed sound, SPLR is sound pressure level of reference sound. So they, they took one sound and they said this is the reference sound. And now they compare the observed sound, what sound that we have, what sound that we are testing, we are comparing it with the reference sound. Okay. So if the observed sound and the reference sound have the same intensity, then it becomes, suppose it is 5, this is 5, 5, 5 becomes 1. So 20 log 1, log 1 is 0, so 20 into 0 is 0. 
so the loudness of the reference sound is zero decibels okay so the same thing the zero decibel loudness is a loudness that is equal to the reference sound it should not be considered as complete silence we make we make a usual assumption in our brain saying that zero decibels is equal to complete silence no it is not complete silence it is just equal to the reference sound that has been arbitrarily set as the reference sound whose uh, intensity is zero decibel so that with this we can compare the other sounds okay now if the observed sound is 10 times louder than the reference sounds then equation will become like this 20 decibel 20 log splo by splr so splo is 10 and uh, splr is 1 10 divided by 1 is 10 so 20 log 10 log 10 is equal to 1 so 20 into 1 is 20 decibels so if this observed sound is 10 times louder than the reference sound then it becomes 20 decibels okay so this is only observed sound is 10 times cross it is into 10 times louder then it becomes zero becomes zero after 10 times loudness of that becomes 20 decibels okay it is not to be considered zero plus uh, 20 decibels zero plus 20 decibels is 20 decibels it is not the multiplication it is not the addition it is the multiplication okay so 20 decibels means that the sound is 10 times louder than the reference sound same goes if the if it is if you, if you are saying 40 decibels it means that the sound is 100 times louder than the reference sounds so it is becoming multiplied so do not that uh, the, if suppose if the zero if it is reference sound is zero decibels 10 times louder is 20 decibels 100 times louder than the reference sound is 40 decibels 1000 times louder than the reference sound is 60 decibels so 40 decibels is not 20 plus 20 it is like uh, uh, 10 times louder than the reference sound it becomes 20 decibels 100 times louder than the reference sound that becomes 40 decibels like that so uh, as the decibel level is increasing it is basically multiplying it is not adding this is something that you have to remember all this is arbitrary but it's important to remember when we say uh, we should not we should not assume that 20 plus 20 is 40 it is like 40 decibels is 100 times louder than the reference sound so they took a sound and they called it the reference sound and they said the 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 intensity of this reference sound is zero decibels and from there we keep calculating so that we have a uniform system which can be used to communicate okay coming to speech frequencies human beings when they talk they talk always in this 5 to uh, 1000 uh, 2000 decibels uh, gap in in this range only most of our talking speech frequencies fall because uh, they, we talk in these frequencies this uh, part becomes what is called a speech banana this is this is called a speech banana okay in that the middle frequencies 500 to 2000 we call it the speech frequencies now why is this concept is important Suppose a person, a person is having absolutely no problem with the speech frequencies, but his uh, above the high frequency sounds, the cochlea has got damaged. Then what will happen? Uh, then uh, though he is having a severe, uh, severe hearing loss, severe sensory neural hearing loss, this will be his uh, speech frequencies will be normal. He will be able to con converse normally with other people. Okay, he will be able to converse normally with other people. So only if you are if you are having a problem with the speech frequencies, they will advise a hearing aid. If it is falling above, uh, which is uh, away from the speech frequencies, we are not having that much of a problem. Okay, for the setting of hearing aid to give a proper hearing aid to the patient, this speech frequencies concept will come into importance. What is the benefits of hearing aid? This confirms the type of hearing loss. So after doing a Rene's test, we thought that okay, the patient is having conductive hearing loss. But after doing this test, we are confirming the type of hearing loss, whether it is a conductive type of hearing loss or is it a sensory neural kind of hearing loss. Also, we will get to know the degree of hearing loss in a much more, uh, you know, properly, we'll be st strongly, we'll be able to find out what is the degree of hearing loss. So, suppose the patient is able to hear, have a, uh, have a, uh, suppose this is uh, 15, 10 decibels is his uh, bone conduction and 60 decibels is his air conduction. So, this is the level at which he has lost his hearing. So 500, suppose it is it is 70 and then it is 80, then it is 90 at 2000 hertz. 
So suppose this is the example. This is the this is the air conduction curve. So we say 70 plus uh, 80 plus 90 divided by 3. That will become his average hearing capacity or hearing level. Okay, that is how we calculate. A large number of speech sound frequencies can be tested. So this entire range in which his ears can hear properly. There is more also in high frequency, but usually for, for basic day to day purposes, these are the frequencies that we test. So large number of frequencies can be tested. Next come to hearing loss categories. So I, already we have uh, talked about this concept air conduction threshold is when the patient first recognizes the sound when a sound is given to through the headphones when sound is given through the headphones through the pinna okay this will be testing the your what is air conduction going to test it is going to test your external artery canal the tympanic membrane the middle ear and ocular system okay till here but it also tests the sensor neural pathway because uh, only when the sensor neural pathway is working properly, your sound will travel all the way to the brain. If there is a problem with the sensor neural pathway, at this level only it will get uh, blocked. Okay, uh, so uh, that is the air conduction threshold is when the patient first recognizes the sound. Bone conduction threshold is when we put a mastoid vibrator and what is the minimum sound or the minimum intensity that the patient first recognizes the sound. Till 15 decibels, as I was telling, till 15 decibels is considered normal. Bone conduction up to 25 decibels is considered normal. Okay, only when it crosses this 25 decibels, we say the patient is having hearing loss. Okay, what is mild hearing loss? Mild hearing loss is when the patient has 26 to 40 decibels. Moderate hearing loss, 41 to 55 decibels. Moderately severe, 56 to 70 decibels. So you have to uh, realize that or uh, observe that the uh, the, the, these, these things are changing by 15 decibel steps at the level of 15 at the rate of 15 decibel steps. So till 25 is considered normal from 26 to 30 that is the first 15 decibels is considered mild hearing loss. Then the next 15 41 to 55 is called a moderate hearing loss. Mostly we forget that there is something called moderately severe but there is something called moderately severe. There are five okay. So this will help you to remember that there are five categories of hearing loss mild moderate moderately severe then severe and profound till moderately severe it is changing in 15 decibels after that severe it is 71 to 90 decibels it is changing in 20 decibel steps greater than 91 is called profound so you have to just uh, remember this so you have to uh, memorize this there is nothing much we can do about this so there is there are five categories of hearing loss that is mild moderate moderately severe severe and profound the first three after 25 decibels that they, uh, they are changing in 15 decibel steps then the severe is changing in 20 decibel steps and the profound is greater than 91 decibels so this is something they may ask you in need pg so this is important from the need pg point of view and also when we say when we look at an audiogram and the pay and the audiologist says that the patient is having moderately severe hearing loss then we remember when we, then we understand that it is in between 56 to 70 decibels of hearing loss okay uh, so the same thing normal mild moderate moderately severe moderately severe severe and profound okay till that one was from the this uh, hearing loss categories was uh, from how much of hearing loss this patient is having uh, which is more important at uh, what level you want to give the hearing aid and all that now coming coming to pathology this is important for the uh, for the ENT surgeon so uh, suppose uh, uh, you get an audiogram saying that you have a central perforation a patient comes to you with a central perforation and uh, you get an audiogram saying that there is a hearing loss of 38 decibels then you should think that okay probably there is also auricular interruption behind this perforated drum so you should be prepared for this surgical plan you should think that you may need to do some auriculoplasty okay if it is less than 30 decibels if it is less than 30 decibels approximately then you can think that probably there is no auricular uh, auricular interruption or auricular pathology also there is only tympanic membrane perforation and you can do uh, meningoplasty or type 1 uh, tympanoplasty both are the same okay so to come to pathology if there is complete obstruction of the external artery canal suppose wax you cannot have a hearing loss more than 30 decibels so suppose a patient has come to you, you are having wax, completely blocked with wax and he says that the hearing loss is 60 decibels. Then you say that, okay, okay, there is the problem is not only wax, there is something else also. So you keep something in the mind before you go, uh, go and counsel the patient. You cannot say, okay, I have to remove the wax and the patient is going to be fine. 
okay so what is uh, 30 decibels come into 30 decibels come into mild hearing loss because 25 to 40 is mild hearing loss 26 to 40 okay when there's a perforation tympanic membrane hearing loss can be in between 10 to 40 decibels auricular interruption will be around 38 decibels auricular interruption with intact drum it is having a more hearing loss suppose the, this is uh, an external artery canal uh, this is the tympanic membrane and the ossicle the suppose the malleus is good the stapes is good but there is no incus so there is an auricular dislocation maybe because of head trauma or something and the tympanic membrane is intact so that uh, the sound waves will uh, will not be able to pass uh, through the auricular system because auricular system is damaged so they will go through the through of both the, uh, I mean, the here the sound waves will hit the oval window and the round window simultaneously. So there is no phase difference. So why the auricular interruption with intact drum is having a higher frequency hearing, higher uh, loss? That is because there is no phase difference is not being maintained. The same thing if you have external artery canal, this is a tympanic membrane, uh, this is the uh, middle ear, and the auricular system is intact, but there is a perforation. So when a sound strikes, it will preferentially go through the auricular system first, then through the open tympanic membrane to the round window. So there is a phase difference that is maintained because of which auricular interruption with perforated drum has a 38 decibels of hearing loss, whereas auricular interruption with an intact drum has a more hearing loss of 54 decibels. But the most important question that is asked in the need PG is uh, complete fixation of stapes with plate. What is the hearing loss? That is 60 decibels. 60 decibels is when there is 60 decibels when there is complete fixation of the uh, ossic, uh, the staples foot plate as in otosclerosis. So this is one of the important questions from the need PG point of view. Complete fixation of staples foot plate 60 decibels. This is something you have to remember. Now coming to the audiogram. Now the same thing we have to we have to have a uh, set of symbols so that uh, we can communicate with each other. So air conduction unmasked for the right ear, it is denoted by the symbol O. Air conduction unmasked for the left ear is indicated by the symbol X, but it is blue. Okay, by the symbol blue. Okay. The same thing, uh, uh, air conduction masked, air conduction masked, we denote it by the uh, triangle symbol. Air conduction masked for the left ear uh, is a uh, square and it is blue color right r for right ear uh, r, r red is for right ear both are having r so you can remember it like that and uh, the other one is blue blue left is blue ear bone conduction unmasked lesser than sim symbol bone conduction unmasked for the left ear is greater than symbol bone conduction masked for the right ear is open bracket and uh, for the left ear is closed bracket not responding you for the right ear it is uh, uh, symbol like this O with one arrow to the left side and uh, left ear it is O with the arrow to the right side. So these are the symbols uh, that we that we usually do but most of them we require is the air conduction unmasked we do this. This is uh, usually uh, used and the bone conduction we usually mask the bone conduction. We are going to talk about in the next uh, presentation why bone conduction is always masked. So in day to day practice we use uh, this air conduction unmasked symbol for right ear it is O and for left ear it is X and bone conduction masked for right ear it is open bracket symbol for left ear it is uh, close bracket symbol. So these are the various symbols that are used uh, to denote an audiogram. Okay. With this, the first part of the presentation is over. Thank you for the patient listening.